Let us continue our discussion of different types of gene interactions and how to diagnose those interactions by looking at the phenotypic ratios in the progeny from a dihybrid cross. Let us discuss a type of interaction called recessive epistasis. And this is best illustrated by the example of this um, a plant um, which makes a flower called the blue-eyed Mary. And so the wild type is, is blue. And if you are a mutant for the M gene, so you are M over M, you get a, a pink flower. Whereas if you are mutant for the W gene, then you get a white flower. And this can be understood in terms of a, a, a biochemical uh, synthesis uh, pathway where the wild type allele of W, so W plus, makes enzyme 1 that converts a colorless precursor into a magenta intermediate. Um, and the wild type allele of the M gene, so M plus, codes for an enzyme that converts the magenta intermediate into a blue pigment. And as we have done before, let's start off by writing the phenotypes of the different classes of uh, uh, sort of phenotypic combinations. So if you are W plus over dash and um, M plus over dash, then you have both the enzymes and the colorless precursor will get converted to, uh, into the magenta intermediate and the magenta intermediate will get converted into the blue pigment and therefore you will have the wild type phenotype of blue. If you have the dominant phenotype of the first gene, so W plus over dash, but the mutant phenotype of the second gene and so you are M over M, then you will lack enzyme 2, you will have enzyme 1, colorless precursor will get converted into magenta intermediate, but the magenta intermediate will not get converted into the blue pigment because of a lack of enzyme 2, and your phenotype is going to be magenta, as we stated previously. If you are um, mutant for the first gene, so you are little w over little w, but you have the dominant phenotype for the second gene, so you have at least one allele that makes enzyme two, you will be blocked at the first stage because you will lack enzyme 1 and the colorless precursor will never get converted into magenta and therefore there isn't any question of um, uh, converting uh, the magenta into blue even though you do have enzyme 2 and therefore your phenotype is going to be white. So the phenotype of the first gene is white and the phenotype of the second gene is magenta. Now, what will happen in the double mutant? In the double mutant, you have neither enzyme, and therefore, you will never be able to convert the colorless precursor into the magenta intermediate, and your phenotype is going to be white. So what we see here is that the W mutant hides the phenotype of the M mutant. In the double mutant, instead of seeing magenta, which is the phenotype of the M mutant, we see the the phenotype of the W mutant, which is white, and therefore we say W is epistatic 
to M. And it is called recessive epistasis since it is the recessive allele of W that hides the phenotype of um, the, the other gene. Next, let us work out the dihybrid cross to see what kind of a modified 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 phenotypic ratio is obtained in the case of recessive epistasis. And as before, we have our four phenotypic classes. You can be dominant for both the genes. So W1 plus over dash and M plus over dash. Or you could be dominant for the first gene and homozygous for the mutant allele or the recessive allele for the second gene. You could be homozygous for the mutant or recessive allele of the first gene and have the dominant phenotype of the second gene. And finally, you could be a double mutant, therefore you're homozygous for the mutant alleles of both genes. And we know that these phenotypic classes will be found in a 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio. And now we can write down the phenotypes that we'll observe in these four classes. The first case, W plus over dash and M plus over dash, means you have both the enzymes and therefore you will be able to convert the colorless precursor into the, uh, the magenta intermediate and the magenta intermediate into uh, the blue pigment and so you will be blue. And if you're mutant for the second gene, then you are magenta. If you are mutant for the first gene, then you are white. And since W is epistatic to M in the double mutant, the mutant allele of W will hide the phenotype of M. The phenotype of M is magenta. However, instead of seeing magenta, you will see W's phenotype, which is white. And therefore, we will get a ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 4 of blue is to magenta, magenta is to white, and that is the modified 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio that we observe when there is recessive epistasis. It is also possible for the dominant allele of one gene to hide the mutant phenotype of um, the other gene, and that is called dominant epistasis. So, um, that an example of dominant epistasis in foxgloves. So the, these two flowers on the right, they are both little w over little w. If you have the, if you're recessive for the D gene, then you are light pink in color. And if you have the dominant allele, then you are dark pink in color. However, if you have the dominant allele of the W gene, then it restricts all the pigmentation to the spots and therefore the flower becomes white. And when that happens, it does not matter what allele of the D gene you have because if you were always white in color. And therefore, 
the dominant allele of W hides the phenotype of the D gene because you cannot tell whether the flower is white, uh, light pink or dark pink uh, when you have the dominant allele of the W gene and therefore you say that this is a situation of dominant epistasis W is epistatic to D and so let's fill in the phenotypes that we just wrote down so if you are little w over little w then you have color everywhere and if you have the big d or the dominant allele at least one dominant allele um, then you are dark pink whereas if you have the if you're homozygous for the recessive allele little d over little d then you are light pink If you have even one allele, uh, one dominant allele of uh, W, then you are always white, no matter what allele of the D gene you have, because W is epistatic to D and it restricts all pigmentation to the spots, so the flowers are white no matter what. And so now, if we carry out the dihybrid cross and look at the progeny, then we will have our four phenotypic classes. You could be um, uh, 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 big D over dash and big W over dash. So dominant, dominant. Or you could be recessive for the D gene homozygous for the recessive allele little d over little d while still being dominant w big w over dash for the second gene or you could be dominant for the first gene big d over dash while being recessive for the um, W gene and the last is homozygous for the recessive alleles of both the genes and we know that these are going to have a 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio. The first phenotypic class dominant dominant is going to be white in color because the big W allele restricts all pigmentation to the spots and is epistatic to the uh, uh, D gene and so the even the second class where you have the your homozygous for the recessive allele of D um, and have one dominant at least one dominant allele of the W gene is also going to be white. Whereas the third phenotypic class will have a dark pink color. And the last uh, phenotypic class will have a light pink color. And therefore, we will get a modified ratio of 12 is to 3 is to 1 white is to dark pink is to light pink and therefore if we see a 12 is to 3 is to 1 ratio in the progeny of a dihybrid cross, 
then we should suspect that dominant epistasis is at play.